Good afternoon. I welcome uh, everyone. I would like to thank you on behalf of uh, Angela, Alexandra, Robert, Cole, all the sisters and brothers of Rahmat, all the cousins, for, uh, for you having taken the time to come here and spend uh, a few moments to reflect on a great life. Yeah, the moment is important uh, for different reasons. Uh, first of all, it's important because we are here for the love of Rahmat. We all love Rahmat for so many reasons, so many reasons. First of all, first reason that comes to mind every time we talk about Rahmat is uh, his limitless generosity. I, I can count on the fact that few in this room were not touched by his generosity in one way or the other. He was always ready to lend a hand, be there, support. I personally had this experience with him all my life, and I saw him do this with every single person, family or friend. But, uh, you know, when I uh, was thinking about uh, uh, saying a few words tonight, you know, we, in Persian we have a saying that says, uh, uh, which means may God bestow mercy or uh, vouchsafe mercy. But I want to use this uh, motto the way I feel it, the way I felt it throughout my life. When I say it really, I translate it literally in, from Persian can also mean may God make rahmat. May God make us all like Rahmat. For me, Rahmat was always a role model, was the man I wanted to become. His, his style, his, uh, his qualities, even the suit I wear today is inspired by the suit he was wearing when he was coming to visit us in Italy. <laughs> um, he taught us so many things. So Khuda Rahmat Kone for me means May God make us all like Rahmat. <laughs> That's a great cause. <laughs> but when we gather at gatherings like this, these gatherings are important for many reasons. One reason is that when an individual leaves the physical garment and ascends to the world of the spirit, that turns our attention towards the world of the spirit. It somehow induces us to look at the higher realm. So thanks to Rahmat, although we are here in the presence of his physical garment, he is calling us to look above and reflect on the life of the spirit. In the Baha'i writings, the essence of the human, in fact, is spirit. So the body is the means for us to learn, to experiment, to have experiences that are fruitful and necessary for our spiritual development. So when Rahmat took this step and invited us somehow here, he is calling us to look at the life of the Spirit. That is why these events, this particular event, is monumental. Every time we pause and we reflect on the life of the Spirit, that is the moment that is very meaningful for us. Um, in the writings of the, uh, the various religions, in the holy texts, we usually read about heaven and earth. And uh, we somehow have different ways of relating to these two concepts, which are very similar <laughs> fundamentally. In the Baha'i writings, we find often in the Baha'i prayers 
the term that says heaven and earth and everything between them. I was always puzzled what this everything between them meant. Somehow I believe that this everything between them, it's a space, it's a sphere we create to experiment beautiful, meaningful, spiritual experiences that help us reorient our lives in our everyday life. This event may be one of those spaces, suspended between heaven and earth. Because we depart from everyday physical lives, we orient ourselves towards the world of the spirit, and we experience something in this rarefied air where we talk about beauty, we talk about virtues, we talk about the life of the spirit, and the progress of the soul. In the Baha'i writings, uh, it talks about the moment where the soul departs from the body, when there is this, somehow we call it detachment, which is our way of understanding this process. We call it detachment, but we don't know exactly what it means. There is no science for this. <laughs> but in the, in, in the Baha'i faith, the soul continues its journey after this detachment. I would like to read a quote that says, to consider that after the death of the body, the spirit perishes, is like imagining that a bird in a cage will be destroyed if the cage is broken. Though the bird has nothing to fear from where the bird has nothing to fear from the destruction of the cage. Our body is like the cage, and the spirit is like the bird. We see that without the cage, the bird flies in the world of sleep. Therefore, if the cage becomes broken, the bird will continue and exist. Its feelings will be even more powerful, its perceptions greater, and its happiness increased. In truth, from hell, it reaches a paradise of delights. Because for the thankful birds, there is no paradise greater than freedom from the cage. So this is the outlook that we have when we look at Rahmat's journey. In the Baha'i writing, this, this process of growth in the spiritual world, when we are aware of it, it helps us also live our everyday life. That's what I'm saying when I think that this moment is a great moment. Because when we reflect on the future of Rahmat, as he goes through the worlds of God and progresses towards his almighty Father, we are somehow inspired to think of a continual progress of the soul. So we are here to look at his future. And uh, when we think about future, in the Baha'i Rakim it says that, know that of a truth, that the soul after its separation from the body will continue to progress until it attaineth the presence of God in a state and condition which neither the revolution of ages and centuries nor the changes and chances of this world can alter. So with this conviction, our invitation here is actually an invitation to honor his life, but to also to joyfully accompany him as he plunges in the ocean of the love of God. This plunge is somehow a monumental time in his life. So our joy and our happiness and our getting together here helps him. And uh, in the Baha'i writing, there is another quote that says, for this particular reason, why is not, of course we mourn, but why this moment is not a moment of mourning. Baha'u'llah says, I have made death a messenger of joy. Wherefore dost thou grief? So why do we grief? So for Rahmat, this is a moment of joy. This separation 
is the freedom from the cage. <laughs> As we think of Rahmat here, we also think of uh, his brother Hu Shang and his cousin Ehsan, both also Rohani, <laughs> that passed away in a span of less than six months. These three were very close to each other. Their experiences in life were very similar. And uh, we think that there is a mystery behind this. We feel there is a mystery behind this. <laughs> and somehow we feel that they are joining hand in hand to take together also this step as they joined hands in many steps they took in their lives. The family has prepared a program uh, for today's uh, uh, event. And I will just go and illustrate the program. There will be a, a prayer, uh, a video recorded prayer in, uh, in uh, Persian. Then there will be a prayer read by Roya in German. There will be a piano piece by John, Robert's brother. There will be a reading in English by Alexandra. There will be a prayer in French by Cole. Then there will be a video recorded prayer. Then Angie will give a eulogy about her father. <laughs> there will be a short slideshow about Rahmat. There will be then a, a prayer, which is basically the only ritual in the Baha'i faith during burial, is a prayer read by Ramin. And the prayer, uh, it has a, a short sentence, and then there are 19 exclamations, sorry, six exclamations, read 19 times. This is a special prayer that is said at the time of burial and is the only ritual that we do have in the Baha'i faith for this event. So for this prayer, some friends may want to stand up or some friends may want to stay seated. It's totally free to do what as you like. Some people would like to face the casket and stand. So if you feel that you want to do so, please do so. After uh, uh, Ramin's prayer, uh, the casket will be taken and then will be lowered uh, to the hearse that is parked behind here. And we can slowly make our way out towards the hearse around the building. And we walk to the, to the plot where, La, uh, where the Rahmat will rest together with his wife, Elfide. At the site of the burial, there will be two prayers read by Farzane and Shohre. And if friends would like to say prayers there, or poems, or whatever you feel like, you may do so. So uh, I will start with the prayer, project it, and then we can continue. Thank you once again for coming. Jahan-e-Javdani-Shetan 
دید است عزیز فرما بنده قدیم است خلعت بدی اتا ای بی نیاز بیا و بنواز و به خلوتگاه را و در محفل تجلی همدم و دم ساز نما توی دهنده و بخشنده و مهربان و توی آمر زنده و نوازنده و توانا Mein Gott, du Vergeber der Sünden, Verleiher der Gaben, Verbanner der Not. Wahrlich, ich flehe dich an, vergib die Sünden derer, die das irdische Gewand abgelegt haben und zur geistigen Welt aufgestiegen sind. O oh mein Herr, mache sie rein von Fehlern, vertreibe ihre Sorgen und wandle ihre Finsternis in Licht. Lass sie eintreten in den Garten der Glückseligkeit, wasche sie mit dem reinsten Wasser und gib, dass sie deine Herrlichkeit auf dem erhabensten Berge schauen. Abdul Baha.
my God, O oh my God, verily thy servant, humble before the majesty of thy divine supremacy, lowly at the door of thy oneness, hath believed in thee and in thy verses, hath testified to thy word, hath been enkindled with the fire of thy love, hath been immersed in the depths of the ocean of thy knowledge, hath been attracted by thy breezes, hath relied upon thee, hath turned his face to thee, hath offered his supplications to thee, and hath been assured of thy pardon and forgiveness. He hath abandoned this mortal life and hath flown to the kingdom of immortality, yearning for the favor of meeting thee. O Lord, glorify his station, shelter him under the pavilion of thy supreme mercy, cause him to enter thy glorious paradise and perpetuate his existence in thine exalted rose garden, that he may plunge into the sea of light in the world of mysteries. Verily, thou art the generous, the powerful, the forgiver, and the bestower. Abdul Baha. Ô oh Dieu, rafraîchis, réjouis mon esprit, purifie mon cœur, éclaire mes facultés. Je remets toutes mes affaires entre tes mains. Tu es mon guide et mon refuge. Je ne m'abandonnerai plus à la tristesse ni au chagrin. Je serai débondant de joie et de bonheur. Ô oh Dieu, je ne serai plus envahi par l'anxiété ni accablé par les tourments. Je ne m'apesantirai plus sur les ennuis de la vie. Ô oh Dieu, tu es pour moi un ami plus véritable que je ne le suis moi-même. Je me consacre à toi, ô oh Seigneur. Paola.
Okay, I'm gonna try this. <laughs> uh oh, okay. Okay, our Papa Rahmat Rouhani was truly an exceptional man. Coming from nothing, he left Tehran at a young age with literally just the shoes on his feet and the shirt on his back. Papa built a solid foundation for his business and for his own family. The cornerstone of this foundation was the deep-rooted pride he had in his heritage and his will and desire to have his own family not grow up the way he did. When Papa arrived in Germany at the age of 18, he immediately got to work founding an oriental rug business in Stuttgart. In a short amount of time, his business was thriving, and in a typical Papa fashion, he offered to let his older brother, Hushang, take over the shop so that Hushi, too, could have um, leave Iran and emigrate to a more prosperous Germany. Papa's thirst for success and his wanderlust led him to south, led him south, excuse me, south to Regensburg in Bavaria, where my sister Nini and I grew up. Again, in a very short order, Papa built a successful carpet business in the, in the city center of Regensburg. Our life in Pendling, a small village outside town, was idyllic. From making lifelong friendships to Sunday lunches at Hermann's, to our beautiful summer trips to Albano, Italy, where we spent days at the beach with the Rachmartians and Papa and Mama, who were the greatest and the most loving parents one could hope for. In 1981, Papa made the difficult decision to relocate his family to Los Angeles. This was a difficult transition for me and Nini. But once again, Papa did everything imaginable to make this transition easier for us, even though he was having to start a new business once again. After graduating from UCLA, I decided it was time to strike out, strike out on my own and move to my own apartment, which Papa had a hard time with. He was very protective of his daughters and didn't believe any guy was deserving of them or us, actually. Thankfully, Robert was, Robert, my husband, was as persistent, I have got him. <laughs> Thankfully, Robert was as persistent and stubborn as Papa. And despite a difficult period, <laughs> this period, um, and despite a difficult period, when we first started dating, Papa finally gave us his blessing for us to marry in the year 2000. Though heartbroken when Robert and I moved away from Los Angeles that exact same year, Papa was ecstatic when he learned he would have, um, excuse me, a feisty little grandson in 2004. Anyone that has visited 319 South Kenter can attest to Papa's love for Kuli Mouse, his legacy. Just by walking a few steps past his front door, he literally created a shrine of framed pictures of Kuli Mouse. Cole, sorry. Um, our Papa was usually a quiet, gentle man, but we all have experienced his need his need to be loud and proud when he had to be. He loved all his brothers and sisters. He had a special place for children and all kinds of animals, which he has passed on to me. He loved laughing at jokes, traveling around the world, and just being with family and friends. When our mommy, the light of his life, fell ill and eventually passed away, Papa was not quite the same person anymore. He had to take the, on the role of a mother and a father at the same time. Nini and I find peace and solace in the fact that he is reunited now with Mama somewhere in another better world.
So now Ramin is going to come and uh, read the long prayer for the departed. I say long because it's a bit longer than the usual prayer. And those who may want to stand, you may stand, but you're welcome to stay seated. Oh my God, this is thy servant and the son of thy servant, who hath believed in thee and in thy signs, and set his face towards thee, wholly detached from all except thee. Thou art verily of those who show mercy the most merciful. Deal with him, O thou who forgiveth the sins of men, and concealeth their faults, as beseemeth the heaven of thy bounty, and the ocean of thy grace. Grant him admission. Grant him admission within the precincts of thy transcendent mercy. That was before the foundation of earth and heaven. There is no God but thee. The ever forgiving, the most generous. Allah Abha. We all verily worship God. Allah Abha. We all verily bow down before God. Allahu Abha. We all verily are devoted unto God. Allahu Abha. We all verily give praise unto God. Allahu Abha. We all verily give thanks unto God. Allahu Abha. We all verily are patient in God. Okay. All right. Um, this wasn't planned. I'm just going to say a few things. Um, yeah, I, this wasn't planned, so I'm just going to speak from my heart, if that's okay. Um, I'll speak louder. I will. Um, what do I say about my dad? And many of you know, I look at all these faces here, many of you knew how much he loved us. Both me and Anji. I just want to say thank you for it. He gave his whole life for us gave us so many things that some kids probably never have gotten in their life. He brought us up with values that I will take on and hopefully honor him with. He was a devoted father, devoted husband. When things got hard with my mom, he never never wavered in his support and love for her. He always um, was our rock, you know, he um, did everything he could for her. And uh, I will always remember him and be thankful for him for that, for uh, having done that for us. I look at all these faces here and I'm, I'm thankful for each and every one of you coming. I look at Pavis and I just want to say thank you, Pavis, for what you have done for my dad. Very kind of you. He came every twice a week and he would cook my dad's favorite food and they would eat together. And uh, that was very special. So thank you for that. I look at Motaram. 
his eldest sister, and I think I thank you for always being there. He, every night he called, and you guys chit-chatted, and he had issues and needed help with something. You were always there, giving him remedies for his stomach aches and what have you. So thank you for that. And I look at the other two sisters, Iran and Farzane, and I thank you for everything, for all the memories. We stayed with Iran many times in Iran. Well, thank you for those memories and for being such good sisters to him and Farzi. We have so many good memories in, in Italy, where we were almost every vacation that we got. And I think a little bit of the international flair that both Andrea and I have, we got from you being in Italy and just the good memories. My mom very much loved it there as well. She always felt comfortable, so thank you. And uh, thank you all for coming. I wanted to thank the DeFeo family, Robert Cole, Jerry and John. Thank you for playing the piano. Very special to us for coming out. Shore and Bachmann, who did a great job with the program. We had nothing to do with it. He did the videos, he did everything. So thank you for that, Bachmann, Shore and Fazi. Giti Kambis, Neda, thank you very much for everything you've done, both for my dad and for my mom. Always remember you that way. Thank you very much. And Roya and Ramin, thank you for coming from Florida. And I look at so many faces, I, I, I am I forgetting anything? Please forgive me. I look at Payman and Puya, and thank you for coming. I know it's uh, been a hard four months for Roya and you and me and Angie losing our fathers so but they were very close together and we could take comfort in knowing that they're together probably telling jokes so and Paris has us so yeah that was uh, another one of my dad's friends thank you very much everybody thank you for the beautiful flowers did i forget somebody no thank you everybody thanks friends and i see genus and i see hang on our closest friends from school they had a very good relationship with my dad. He would probably always drive us things to places. And yeah, thank you for all that, guys. It's good to see you. And just to finally, um, just want to say a blessing over my dad. Um, he was my hero. He always will be. I thank him for everything that he's done. I will miss him everywhere I look. I'll just see him. That picture was taken by me in Italy, in Milan. He loved, he loved Italy. So I, I look at that and I love it because he also loved animals and their pigeons. He would always bring a, a herd pigeon home when we were younger to, to nurse it and then he let it go. Always something, yeah. He loved, he loved the dogs, yeah. He's a kind man. He loved all things of beauty, as Shore would say. He loved beautiful cars, um, beautiful clothing art, music, everything that was beautiful. So just wanted to mention that. And uh, yeah, Angie and I just want to say thank you. And if you have any stories to say about my dad, please find me and let me know. I wish I had written some of the things down. They were such great storytellers, all the siblings. They would sit around and retell stories of their travels. And I will miss that. So, tell us a story about my dad, if you have a good one to share. And I am going to end it here. I'm going to say a blessing over my dad. And... I'm going to say, okay, be free, be strong, be proud of who you have been. Know that you will be mourned and missed, and that no one can replace you. That you have loved and are beloved. Move beyond form, flowing like water, feeding on sunlight and moonlight, radiant as the stars in the night sky. Pass the gates, enter the dark without fear, returning to the womb of life to steep in the cauldron of rebirth. Rest, heal, grow young again. Be blessed. Love you, Dad. <laughs> Thank you. So and now we are going to move the casket uh, to the back door and then we can make our way, we can stand up while the casket is being removed and we wait until the casket is removed and then we can make our way through the doors to the back of the building towards the hearse. <laughs>